Hi there, it's Sam from poodles.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today's project is this one. It's a tall lidded box. Now, I love our colours that we have. We've got such a beautiful selection and collection of um, colours, core colours. So that's our brights, regal, subtles and neutrals. And then we have the added in, in colours, which tend to be a bit more on trend. But these are our classic colours. And I do feel sometimes that they become... Um, not the afterthought, I can't think what the phrase is, but sort of they're secondary to the project. But this one is all about showing off beautiful colours. And I, my favourite colours are green and red. Two specific kinds of green and red, a really deep green, almost emerald. I do have an emerald engagement ring. Um, but, you know, a really deep green and then a really deep rich red. And so therefore, I can make a project that uses classic Christmas colours with just a little peep of paper at the top. Now, the reason my tag is here is because I had a kitten assistant who decided she wanted to have a little bit of play with my ribbon and caught it. So that got moved. But that aside, I'm going to show you how to make it. Finished dimensions of the box, two and five eighths by two and five eighths by six inches tall, which is six and a half by six and a half by 15 centimetres. And to start it, you need a piece of cardstock that is eight by 11 inches. So this is cherry cobbler, my favourite red that we currently have. Do love real red, cherry cobbler, deep and rich. So eight by 11 inches 20 by 28 centimeters so on the long side score it at two and five eighths five and a quarter seven and seven eighths and ten and a half and that's all in inches which in metric six and a half thirteen nineteen and a half and twenty six and then on the short side score it at two inches five centimeters your piece of paper for the lid is six by six inches um, in metric it's 14 and a half by 14 and a half and we're going to score on all four sides at um, what's the word <laughs> one and five eighths of an inch but we're going to move it out very slightly so that the lid will just slip over the top of the box so only a tiny bit and score it at uh, one and five eighths of an inch on all four sides which is four centimeters on all four sides. There we go, all the scoring done. So let me get this burnished up. So the box um, sides, as I said before, they're two and five eighths of an inch, but the base of the box, I've only scored it at two inches. So it doesn't completely meet but there is an overlap and that gave me the full six inch height that I was after. I wanted sort of more height than I felt that the base needed. But once, you, as long as you've got an overlap, you'll be fine. Okay, and then with the world's biggest pair of scissors, this is my lid, so I'm going to cut straight on the rectangle and wedge into that square, just like that. And then I'm going to repeat all the way round. That's my good smile up. I don't want to tell you how early it is in the morning that I'm filming this. This is the joy of the summer holidays. Um, but it's... <laughs> I'll show you my alarm in a second. Let me just cut this round. So at the point in time I'm filming it, we're still having our ensuite bathroom redone after a water leak and the insurance. <laughs> Which means that trying to film when all of the children are up and there's somebody making an awful lot of noise. And so this is my, it's 7.30 in the morning. <laughs> it's my alarm to wake me up because the builders are due in half an hour. <laughs> Let me just, well, I'm clearly awake. I've been, I've been up and on the go since six o'clock. This morning, like I can't even tell you when you're going to see this. <laughs> but yeah, trying to film in the summer holidays, never fun. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut all of those. I'm going to take away that little skinny rectangle and mitre off a little bit at the top there. Um, so I think you're seeing this about a week after after I have filmed it. Oh, it's complicated. It's like being 
in Doctor Who. I'm just taking out those little, the lumps where I've scored. Yeah, it's like being a time traveller, going backwards and forwards in time. But yeah, my options for filming in the summer holidays anyway are very limited. I'm, you know, I'm not going to demand that the children are quiet. You know, they can manage it for sort of 10, 15 minutes and then they forget. But some of you who've been around with me since my very early videos, um, I used to film early evening in the summer holidays because the children went to bed earlier. And um, there was and my office in our old house was downstairs. And in the middle of filming a video, one of my children decided to thunder along the corridor and take himself off to the toilet and flush the loo. <laughs> that came out in a video. So that was probably about 2014. Right, so I've just put adhesive along there and closed it up. So that's going to be the back. So I'm going to put some tape along here. I feel like I'm talking quieter than normal. I don't know if I am. <laughs> if I wake the children, I wake the children. But Okay, so that's, that's my box base done. So with my lid, I'm going to bring all of that round and close it up. I can't remember if I said the name of this um, paper. I don't know if I have and I now can't remember the name of the paper, but, you know. There we go. It was a little early for, for that. <laughs> if anybody else is on here who who's watching this but also does video tutorials, when do you film yours? <laughs> Often mine are usually filmed sort of between about 11 o'clock and one, 11 o'clock in the morning and one o'clock because there's going to come a point in time this morning when that sun is the sun's not up here well it is but it's just very overcast but the sun will come streaking through this window right in front of me and it diagonally streaks straight across my desk like that so I can't film then either right one lid on so yeah it's gone by about 11 o'clock in the morning that sun Okay. This is beautiful ribbon, but it doesn't like me when I'm filming. And it's not a bad bow, is it? I've literally just, while I was drinking my coffee this morning, I've just been watching one of those. I like to watch, to go on Facebook Watch and get all those five minute videos of <clears throat> how to tidy your... your kitchen cupboards or how to lay out your wardrobe and stuff like that and one of them that came up was Christmas wrapping tips which is obviously what I was expecting in August but it was those incredible amazingly talented Japanese artists who like they wrap a massive box with a four inch square of paper but they tied bows and they double looped it so I need to go back and watch it and find out what they did right Christmas to remember and seasonal labels dies is what I've got so on this one I put friends like you make this season special which is beautiful and these fonts are so much fun neater than my handwriting but it feels like it's handwriting love and joy come to you and may it last this whole year through may this be a Christmas to remember and cherish have a holly jolly Christmas Merry Christmas and then the one I used before but it's a red rubber and then the dies as you can see they're all labels so I think I'm going to take that one and what you've got with these dies and I neglected to use them there's loads of them with these dies you have the die but then you've also got the loop that you can hang it with let me take this off without trashing my nails it doesn't want to come off does it So you put the two parts in at the, <clears throat> at the same time. Um, I know, yeah, I forgot to use it with that one. So I might with this one. Let me just decide which 
stamp I'm going to use. So I'm going to go with this one. May this be a Christmas to remember and to cherish. That's quite a big one, but we'll have that. So, stamp first, cut after. Just hack a bit of that off. So I'm going to take that like, cherry cobbler. And then you lay your die around it. So, <clears throat> hmm. and you put your tag part in the top. That red, that cherry cup, I've just re-inked. And then I'm totally cheating and using a magnetic platform here. But that's okay. Nobody's going to tell me off. I'm just doing this just off camera where you can't see. So talk amongst yourselves for a second. Um, I've just had a sudden thought. <laughs> the builders are due in half an hour, but actually my husband's coming in off nights in half an hour, so that's going to be fun. <laughs> Let's finish this video quickly. There we go. And there, it's cut that little label out. Now, I've just realised that I've tied up my ribbon. <laughs> Seriously, filming this early, not a good idea. Um, and I, obviously I've got rid of my twine recently because of fauna, but I found this that clearly she's stolen. So it's currently hiding out in my drawer. put that back in my drawer where she can't find it and we've got so we've got three sets of sticky embellishments and I'm going to take this one I used flat matte gold on that one but I'm going to take this green oops brush metallic dots these are I'm going to tie that on, and like I say, I probably ought to have tied it on before doing my beautiful bow, which, you know, for once turned out okay. And that, I think, is a nice, cute project. Very sweet. I do like those tags. They're very good. And like I say, the fact that you can add a hole if you want to, as I've done on this one and I forgot on this one. But, you know, like I say, it covers up where the cat got it. Seriously, how cheeky. I went downstairs the other day. I'd photographed a bunch of projects and I found one on the floor by the, by the front door. I was like, oh, apparently Fauna found that ribbon. So, anyway, I hope you appreciate this. I hope you like it. Like I said, very early in the morning. Um, and yeah, I hope to speak to you very soon. Bye.